Hello, I'm Dr. Ola Kemmerdiner. Welcome to Discrete Event Simulation. This is Lecture 7, a guided tour through ARENA. I will talk about installing ARENA and simulation in ARENA. Let's start talking about simulation software called ARENA. We will be building models in ARENA and to do that, we need to download a student version of ARENA from the following link. Here, as you can see, I clicked on the link and this is the ARENA simulation website. So you want to go here under Academic and choose Students. So under Academic, we choose Students and click on it. And this is what you see here. It tells you about ARENA software. And very importantly, the student version is available for download free of charge. So if you click, if you click here, you can download the software. I would like to bring your attention to IE ARENA student competition. Think about you trying to do that. That might be something that you would like to do. Again, to be able to work in this class and do the exercises, we need to download the software, so you must do it as soon as possible. So you click here and you can download the software after you register. So please make sure you do that as soon as possible. If you're wondering why we want to use ARENA in this class, besides New Mexico State Universities, many other universities uh, exist where students learn and use ARENA. And so you can see there are a whole bunch of awesome universities that are listed here, including some other Aggies at Texas A&M, MIT, Harvard, Columbia, and so on. So go Aggies and let's start working with ARENA. As I said, it's important for you to install ARENA on your personal computer. If you don't have a personal computer, ARENA is also installed in IE and the Graduate Lab. And again, we must have ARENA student version and we'll be using it all the time in the class. You also must have administrative privileges in order to be able to install ARENA. And again, don't forget to download student version of ARENA as I showed you earlier from this link. Again, you can use student in capital instead of the installation key. So you start ARENA, we'll also load, explore, run an existing model. In this introduction, we browse dialogs and menus, we run the model, you look at results, construct the same model from scratch, use just basic building blocks in the case study, and we'll tour menu, toolbars, drawing, printing, and we'll look at the help system, and you can also look at the options for running and control. So ARENA is a true Windows application, so it works just like Windows in terms of appearance, operation, functions, all of it is your standard function that you could expect from any other Windows application. And it also has interoperability with other software. You can load um, data from Excel. You can use it, uh, use some CAD drawings. You can use MS Office uh, and so on. And if you want to learn more about how to communicate with other software, I direct you to read chapter 10 in the ARENA textbook. So I'll assume that you already know basics of Windows, which means um, how to save things, how to mouse, keyboard, how to size, move, maximize windows, all different menu operations, and some shortcut keys, cutting, pasting, and filling out dialog fields. So again, if you need more information on installing ARENA, you can either get it from the website that I showed you, or you can also read it in Appendix D in your textbook. 
So when you installed it, you can start running it. Basically, just like any other application, you find it. If you find it on your um, desktop, if you save it on the desktop, you just double click your shortcut. So to make long story short, let me sh show you how to do that. So here I'm clicking on my start button in Windows and here I have different programs. So I click on all programs, then my arena is installed in a folder called Rockwell Software. So I click on Rockwell Software, then I click on Arena, then I click on Arena and it's starting Arena for me as you can see. And it says that it's a training license, it's a student license. So let's go ahead and start working with Arena. Just like other Windows applications, Arena has different menus. So we have File menu, we have Edit, Views, Tools, we have also a very important Run menu, we have Windows menu, and we also have Help menu. So if you look at the File menu, this is where we can start a new model or open an existing model. So there's also a very important thing that's called template panel and I'll talk about it more later. And there is a way to save uh, whatever model you're working with. So right now you can see as it starts it right away create, already created model one. If I were to click here it would create a new model and I would have another model. There's also toolbars. A lot of these have this. So here I have toolbars and I can choose which toolbars to show. I can add additional toolbars. Currently we have project bar and a status bar. So you can see if I unclick it then I don't have the my um, project bar shown. And the project bar is very helpful. So if you don't see it, right, you know how to get it back. You go to view and then click on project bar, make sure that it's checked. Also, there is a status bar. And so if I unclick the status bar, see, I now I don't have my status bar. So again, very useful to be able to have the status bar. So I clicked it back and I have my status bar back. So, um, now, let me show about debugging, right? So debugging is at there at the bottom. So if I wanted to have a debug bar, I can also add this debugging bar. Um, but typically, we have it unchecked. Um, but if you needed to debug your problem program um, further, then you can click on, on debug bar and use the information in, in that bar. So notice that these important file, um, important menus like file, edit, and so on, they also have view um, tools, right? They have additional buttons added here. So you can see I have different different type of um, buttons that are already added, right? So you can see on the if I unclick standard, right now I lost some of that new file, right, or new model, uh, or, you know, open the model. So one typically want to have that, right, also don't uh, have the running and so on, right. So if you don't have it, you know how to get it back, right, just click and make sure that it's selected. You can add additional, right, so there's um, animate, right, which is useful to actually create um, the animation of the model, the draw bar, uh, maybe not as, as uh, interesting, but definitely standard animate, some of those are very useful. So now let's say if I wanted a new model, right, I can also click here on this button and it also creates a model. So as I promised you, here's model two. If I didn't want this model, I can close it and then I'm back to my model one 
right? And like if I close that one, I don't have any models open, so I can also open some existing models. So we could, for example, open. So we can open one of the book examples, and um, if you can see. Uh, the way to do that is to basically go to um, your documents folder and then go to Rockwell software so it's not in program files right keep in mind it's in the documents folder so you go to documents folder not program files where you started the arena when you start the arena you go to program files but if you need to open arena then you go to doc arena example um, for example from the book then you need to go to Documents folder. So you go to Documents folder, there is Rockwell Software subfolder, and then inside there, there is Arena subfolder. Inside that folder, there is a book examples. So you, again, you go to Documents, Rockwell Software, Arena, and then Book Examples. All right, so let's open this model and uh, run it. So this is just a simple processing system and to run it I can just click go here or I can go run and then go. So you didn't see as much of it right because it was it ran really fast but we can see the results of the simulation and this is where it tells me how many uh, systems, uh, how many parts went through, so how many entities were processed. I can look at the entity time, I can look at the other um, performance measures, I can look at the processes, the queues, the information about resources, and so on. So if I don't want to look at it anymore, I need to click off of it, and if I want to run it again, I can't. See, it says it has run to the completion, so what I need to do is make sure I end the simulation before I can run it again. If I wanted to change the way I run, I go to the setup. And so I can go through the setup and change it, or I can go step by step if I wanted to see how something happening. I can go step by step. And so as as it goes through, right, I can go and run another step and it changes step by step, right, or just pressing F10 and you can see how it changes step by step. If I wanted to um, change the zoom, I can increase my zoom and that way it's it's much easier to see what really changes could possibly increase it even more and then click here to move things around and center it the way I want and then I can again uh, continue on pressing F10 and as I press you can see how it changes and it has a lot of animation this model has also animation for the queue number, right, and also animation for the resource was utilization, which tells me how many um, drill presses are busy or when the drill press is busy. So again, F10 is step by step, so I do F10, continue this and show with a step by step. If I want to see result, again, this is my results. If I'm done seeing it, I'm closing it off, I remember to end the simulation and it goes back to how it was, except maybe I want to make my zoom smaller again. So here you go, we just ran an example of a model. So here's a quick reminder of what we did. We went file open or click that open button and then we got to the directories that had the book examples model so here where you can see the book examples model and there's more examples under Rockwell software arena examples so I encourage you to look at those examples and learn from them because 
there's a lot of good examples that could be very helpful for you in terms of learning arena also as you watch these videos I encourage you to open arena yourself and follow along as I explain to you on how to do things this will be very helpful and also re-watching and re redoing uh, following what I explained would be very helpful as well so now we can actually do other things you notice we had the model window and that's the right side of the arena window the larger um, side and this is where most of the models are built and you saw it in the examples that were that's where you saw the little drill press and the plots that was the model window and you can resize maximize minimize scroll pan I showed you how to zoom so and I showed you how you you can scroll and move the uh, model as well so all of it you can do and you can have multiple model windows open at once and you can then rearrange them when you go to windows menu you can also cut copy and paste within arena and between arena and other windows applications well not maybe not all different all possible applications but often you can copy paste you know a drawing or copy paste some other things um, from other applications so another important thing that I want to talk about is the two different views and that's a key information that I want you to remember there is a flowchart view and a spreadsheet view and we can model or uh, change the parameters of the model in either view and so it's important to remember how to do that so you can put view split screen to see both flowchart and spreadsheet view otherwise you only get to view the active module type so we're back to the arena let's go ahead and close the uh, current model which is model 3 1 from the book so I click here and it asks me whether I want to save the changes for the model so I say no and here I'm back to my model 1 which was the model that just started when we started the arena and so right there's two views right and we have a flowchart view and a spreadsheet view and if I go go back and reopen my model 301 right and let's like let's say I click here right this is my flowchart view and I clicked on the module in the flowchart and here at the bottom I also have the spreadsheet view and this is where the spreadsheet information here I can click on this and I can change the values right and instead of five maybe I want to increase how often the parts come so maybe I'll say four right so a smaller interarrival time will means that the parts will arrive more often on the system so notice when I change it here and in the spreadsheet it's still five as soon as I do that it also changes the spreadsheet value right so alternatively I could go back to the spreadsheet and I can change it back in spreadsheet to five so here you go right this is just demonstrates of what I mentioned earlier so let's uh, take a look also right that I can do view and now I selected split screen right if I deselected then it gives me a more space to work with my model uh, view right flowchart view so again I can go to view and then I, again I can say split screen right and or I can select um, different views as well so let's say I split the screen so here is both of my both of my views flowchart view and the spreadsheet view so let me go ahead and close this for now right I don't want to save any changes and uh, let's 
talk about why when we use flowchart views and when we use the um, the spreadsheet view. So the flowchart view is used for graphics, process flowcharts, animation, and drawings. And you can edit things by double clicking, just like I showed you. And that gets us into the dialog box, and that's where you can change the values or or select certain things and so on. While spreadsheet view displays model data directly as a spreadsheet, and there you can edit, add, or delete data in this view, and displays all similar kinds of modeling elements at once. So we also want to talk about project bar, and that's what you saw on the left there, on the left hand side, and you can move it around. So let me demonstrate what to do when you so you can see here, this is my project bar. This is the project bar here. I can close off the project bar if I wanted to. And I can go back and attach it by clicking here. I can also move it around and pull it somewhere else. So let me grab the project bar. All right, so um, a little slow, but you can pretty much attach it to wherever you want to, um, or you can put it somewhere at the bottom, right? Or you can pull it back. This is its normal place where it would go to. So to snap it back into its place, just double click on the project bar and it snaps back into place. So here you can see it's already back in its place and uh, as I said very useful because this is where we get our information right and we start building the model we just grab some of the um, elements from different panels and attach them together in the logical sequence right where it shows the flow of entities so the focus of the arena model is to create this flow chart of um, that corresponds to the flow of entities through the system. So important part about the project bar is that it hosts these panels, right? Like here, we, for example, we see basic process, right? Basic process is an important uh, panel. Right, this is where we typically start with a basic process. We also use advanced process and so on. Right, so all of these, then there is reports. As you saw, after we finish running the model, report popped up. Right, we can also find reports after, only after we're running the model, we can find these reports listed here in the reports panel. And you can also do um, look at the navigate. This is another important um, panel. So typically, we start with a basic process. If we needed to attach additional panels, we go here and do template attach. Alternatively, we could use the uh, other way to attach um, where we have tunnel. Tem tem file template panel and we can attach it through there right so and also detach um, so if I wanted to attach some other panel I go to the templates so the templates is again right if you want to know where the templates are this is where you actually go to the program files so you go to program files and then there Rockwell software arena and then template and this is the path on the disk where the templates are located so you go there and this is where you can attach things for example at the end of the course we also will be working with a transfer so we adding this advanced transfer and so you look at this additional panel that wasn't there before right let's say I accidentally uh, detached right 
one of them. So clicking on this ex instead of clicking on this is very easy and it can detach an, a panel from the project bar which was my basic process panel. I often need the basic process so I want to go back and attach it. So I go to the template, right, so again the same pass as before for my basic process. I just go to Program Files, Rockwell Software, Arena, and then Template. And that's where I have this .tpo files, which are templates. And I want my basic process back. <coughs> so this is my basic process. So now, right, I can do whatever I need to do with my basic process or any other um, panels that I wanted to do. Again, if I wanted to detach the advanced process, I can ed detach advanced process or I can detach the advanced transfer, can detach uh, basic process again if I needed to. So to demonstrate the uh, other type of bar called status bar, I already did it by detaching it, so I can or uh, um, closing it off, right? So it's there at the end, right? Every time I I do something, it tells the status of what's being what's happening, right? So I could, for example, um, let's say I go and run this model again, right? So as I run it. You can see at the bottom there, there is a lot of information that's going to show, right? So it tells me it runs the simulation, and uh, it actually at the bottom here, it says ran one out of one simulations, and this is a clock value because it ran, ran to 20, right? If I open the results, right, then it still doesn't close as my simulation. So you could definitely see, right, so it tells me also when when I ran it. Um, and so I haven't finished running the model at this time. So it still says that as soon as I finish running the model, it clears off that information that I have here on the status bar. Right? And you just notice the information is cleared. So if I wanted to hide it, I can uncheck it by going to view right and then check the status bar and notice as soon as I do that it disappears right there's no status bar there at the bottom alright so let's go back let's attach the status bar now it will appear again it appeared and so the next thing I wanted to talk about is actually how to move around and do the changes, right? So as I mentioned before, right, we can zoom in and I showed you how to zoom in and we can zoom out and I showed you how to zoom out, right? You can see all at minimum altitude or by pressing the star key. So a lot of that, right, is very useful in terms of moving around. There's also some named views that you could have, right? And you can assign the hot keys, which are sensitive, so to access the uh, name views, you just do view, name views, right, or uh, press this um, flag button. You can also display grid or snap to the grid, right, and so on. So there is a lot of different things that you can do. Just in for a second, let me demonstrate what I mentioned or what I summarized here. So here I want to demonstrate the views um, in different name views. So you can, I can either do the views and then I can say all right home or previous right. So I can do this through this or I can do the named views. Um, and so if I name my views like in this model three of one, there are several name views. We can see all. This is just what we already see. We can also see logic. Right, or we can see plots, and the plots are at the bottom, right? So now we can do that, or we can see everything at all, right? So if I go to all, then it shows everything for me, right? And it zooms in, right? 
And so notice, right, if I go here, right, this is the zoom that I wanted at first, right, then I can, if I go all, it zooms in specifically at the closer view, right? So using these name views are very useful. You can also show the grid, and that can be useful when you build and try to align things, you know, these uh, grid can be really helpful to make sure that all your things are aligned very well, right? Because you don't want uh, to have something like this, mis misaligned uh, things, you know, like that, right? You want to be able to snap it, right? So it kind of helps you to know where you want things to, to, to be, right? Is to, to see the grid. It kind of helps you with those things. So again, right, if I wanted to undo back to how it was originally, here here you go, right, I just go here and change, or I can go through the edit and undo or redo modes, which which kind of pretty simple, similar, right? I can snap to grid, and that helps me snapping things to grid, right? Um, but now that I deattached it, it doesn't really work right, where it doesn't snap to grid as well, see, and this is what you see if you don't have the snap to grid thing, is now becomes hard to to manage those uh, straight lines, so let's do the snap to grid, and let's see how that could help us. Um, back. So now again, right, these are all very useful uh, things to know. And um, there's definitely several things that are important, right? The modules that we use. And here, right, I have the module. This is a module from the basic process. So you can recognize each module by its shape, right? This is a create module. If I look at this module that's selected now, that's a different module. It's a dispose, right? And as you select it, it tells you what type of module it is also on the... Uh, on a uh, uh, spreadsheet view, right? So this is a flow chart on the top, and then at the bottom we have a spreadsheet view. So let me get rid of the grid for now, just keep it nice and less busy. And so there are different types of modules for different types of actions, right? Like here, this is to generate the parts. This is the create module, that's where the parts are generated. This is the um, process module, and this is where you specify how, uh, what kind of process the entities go through, and that's where we also talk about um, different things, including right the, the name of the project, what kind of action it does, uh, what type of resources there is. Right? So if you double click here, it tells me about the resources. And, and so, in a way, right, there are some modules that are in the um, flowchart uh, module form, right? So these type here, they're flowchart modules. And these types at the bottom here, they are the spreadsheet modules. So notice that the process, right, if I click here, it selects all, it also tells me, right, this is a module, right, this is my module drilling center, right, that's flowchart module, and it's also shown in a spreadsheet view, but uh, it's definitely shown in this flowchart view. When I click on the resource module, right, there is no uh, flowchart module there, right, the resource module is only a spreadsheet module, and it's it's inside it's also connected to the process here this process right drilling center it has some resources there and that's the resource right so resource at the bottom entity is also a uh, spreadsheet module attribute queue variable schedule right all of these here and we'll talk much later about sets right all of these here are spreadsheet modules. Everything above here is a flowchart module. So there's always two types of modules and that's true for other panels, right? Other um, panels like advanced process 
advanced transfer. So most of the uh, panels have both types. Um, it's different for you report and navigate panels because they're separate kind of things. But for other um, process related panels such as basic process or advanced transfer or advanced process, you see there's both types of modules. The uh, flowchart on top and then the spreadsheet on the bottom. So to review, there are two types of modules, right? And the modules are shapes in the project bars. There are basic building blocks. The two types of different modules are flowchart and data modules. And they are different types for different actions and different specifications. So there are some blank modules on the project bar. And you can add the flowchart module to the model. You just drag it from there, right? And so project bar in the flowchart view of model window, you can have as many instances of the same kind of flowchart mod module in the model. But when you use a data module, right, you only have one instance of each data module in the model, right? But it can have many entries. And you can also edit it not only by selecting it in, um, and double single clicking in the project, you can also double click it on the number as well. So it's another alternative way. So to demonstrate that there could be several types of uh, flowchart modules, let me um, pull this out, for example, disconnect it for now and add another process. So right now we have just a one process. I select this one and I add another process after it. And I also am going to connect the two process, uh, the process two to the dispose. Um, and so, um, so now I have process one and process two, right? So I just demonstrated to you that I could have two processes. But when you look at the spreadsheet view, right, there is only a single one, right? And uh, then the multiple ones are listed. And specifically, right, if I do the resources right now, I don't have any resources. Um, but if I select Seize the Release, right, I could add additional resources. And then here I also can do another one, right, that I can add the resource here. Um, or maybe actually, let's cancel that. And let's change this to resource two for the process two. So each process have a separate resource, right? If I click on resources, right, there's only single thing, right? Single thing of resource, which is my uh, spreadsheet module, but it has different resources listed here. All right, so. Let's talk about uh, flowchart modules. We want to um, use flowchart module to describe dynamic processes. And there's nodes or places through which entities flow. And they typically connect to each other in some way. And I showed you how it, we need to have this connection, right? So I connected the process to with the dispose, right? There must be a connection because that tells the entity of where to go. Later on in advanced transfer, we'll use the modules where we don't need to have the connections to, to every single thing because some of it already tells the entity where to go. But that's for advanced process. If you look at the basic process, you always need to connect all the modules, all the flowchart modules in the basic process. They need to be connected to each other, right? So you start with the create and then you end with the dispose, right? You could have multiple creates or multiple disposes. But there should be some connection all the way through that indicates to the entity of how to flow, right? And so the entity flows through this chart, right? And um, the flowchart modules lead the entity. And there must be connections from one flowchart to another flowchart module um, when we build a model based on a uh, basic process panel. 
So basic panel flowchart module types that we already talked about is create and dispose. There is also process. We also talked about that. There is decide, and that's a diamond-shaped module. There is batch, and there is separate. And importantly, also assign. That's where we change to change a lot of parameters. And record. That's where we record some of the statistics, and some of the information um, is recorded. So again, there are other panels uh, that we discussed, including uh, advanced process that I mentioned and advanced transfer. transfer. So the shape-like flow charting, you might have noticed, for example, in advanced transfer, there is different color of shapes. So you often, um, the colors help you combine, know which ones to combine together, right? So typically, you'll see the modules of the same color, right? If you're doing the transfer and you have one module, then there's corresponding other module of the same color, right? And so uh, to demonstrate that, and we'll talk about it more later on, let me show you. So here's what I'm talking about, right? If I have different colors in my advanced transfers, this is my advanced transfer panel. If I have enter, I'm using it with a leave, right? So a similar colors I'm going to combine, right? Or if I do, you know, start and stop, right? Those are, again, similar colors. If I have, um, right, transport request, right? They're, again, a similar color, right? So very often, right, these different colors, they're there for you to kind of remind you of which ones you want to use together. But that's a future um, information, so we'll come back to it later. So as I mentioned earlier, there are two ways to add it. We can double click to open up and then fill out dialogues, right? And that's typically in your flow chart. Or you can single click a module type in the model or project bar and then um, get all the modules of that type in spreadsheet view and then uh, change the things in the spreadsheet view. So data modules are the ones that are um, spreadsheet looking modules, right? That's where you set the values conditions for the whole model. So there is no entity flows, no connections. So basic panel data modules are entity, queue, resource, variable, schedule, set. So in other panels there is other kinds and again, the icons in the project bar look like little spreadsheets, and they're typically at the bottom. So also to use the data module, you want selected or single click the project bar and then add it in the spreadsheet view. You can add it via dialog, for example, double clicking in the leftmost column or right click and select via added dialog. You can double click or indicate it to add a new row. You can right click on the row our column to do different things, right? And so I encourage you to practice and experiment and uh, uh, as soon as you download the model or just go in a, a lab and open Arena and just start playing with it. At most one instance of each kind of data module is in the model and that's very different as I demonstrated to you. We could have multiple um, instances of uh, flowchart modules, right? For example, two processes, right? But there's only one instance of each kind of module in the model, right? There's just different rows that that's in that data module. And so another thing is the relationships. The flowchart and data modules are related through names for objects. For example, when I open the process, you saw I double click on resource and that's where I could add the resources. And Arena keeps an internal list of different kinds of names and it presents existing lists to you where appropriate. And it helps you remember names, protects you from typos. So all names you make up in the model must be unique across the model, even across different type of modules. So that's very important. Let me demonstrate this. So to demonstrate, I'm back in the arena. And so you can see here I have process 1 and process 2. Well, what if I click here and I want to change my process 2 to also be process 1, just like process 1? 
So let me change that and put the process one here and then say OK. See how it reminds me the module name must be unique. Arena will not allow you to, to name something twice, right? And have it the same name, right? So I need to change it back or change it to some other name, but I cannot have this different module being also process one, right? Because it's already using this name. Very similarly for the flowchart uh, for the spreadsheet modules, right? So the process one and process two are flowchart modules, right? There are these shapes, right? Then resource, for example, right, is a uh, spreadsheet module, right, or data module. And so re in resource module, I have two uh, resources, resource one and resource two. Let me demonstrate, right? Let's say here, I also want to call this one as resource one. So I'm going to change this two to one to have resource one. See how it highlighted both? Why did it do that? It's just kind of similar to what it did to me when it said that I couldn't rename my process two to be process one. It did the same thing here in spreadsheet. It highlighted in yellow saying that the module name must be unique. Look, when I click on it, there is a tooltip telling me module name must be unique. So I need to go back and change it back to how it was to resource two. And now I'm back good on good term was arena. So keep in mind that the uh, names must be unique. So great thing about Arena is those tips, right? So we saw when I did something wrong, it uh, reminded me, right, by pulling the tip, right, if I look at the um, certain things and I don't remember what this button says, right, it also generates this tooltip right underneath the error, see how it says save. So it generated this tooltip for me, right? So the tooltips are there. If I don't remember what this button is, it tells me this is template attach. So I know this is where I can attach things, right? And so on, right? If I don't remember that I can animate um, something like a um, queue, right? I can click here and see which one is a, is a queue. Oh, this one is a queue, right? If I want a clock and I don't know, right? I can check and see this is a clock. This is a date, right? So I can know a lot about this, right? I can also um, go around uh, my models that I created and will also generate these data tips. So the data tips and module, they remind you of what it is, right? This is a specific module from template basic process, right? It's name create, the ID is create one, right? If I change the module name here instead of from the create to the arrive or arrivals, then notice, right, if I click on it, it says arrivals and the ID is still create one, right? The type of the module is create, which kind of reminds me was a shape anyways, right? But it's more useful also for something from, for example, advanced transfer, which this shape is very similar to this shape, right? If I put any of those and then didn't remember which one it was, it would tell me whether it's enter or pick station for example. So these are very useful. And also similarly for the for the uh, spreadsheet or data modules as well. I can click on data modules. It can tell me what's going on. If I click here, right, and it also tells me what it is, right, if I decided to rename my resource one into drill, right, now it tells me that's a drill, right, it can tell me, right, specifically the things, you know, um, here too, right, if I had some more information regarding the processes, right, and I can click on the uh, different things to tell me, okay, this is my process one, right, this is the type of stuff that it does, so I could make this much smaller in terms of the action, can still tell me what it really says there, right? So those kind of things are useful. So data tips are great, and some can be user defined, right? And so you right can right click on the object, select properties, and enter text under property description, right? So let me demonstrate. I'm clicking, right? Right clicking on this properties, and then I can say um, parts arrive 
adds a system and then could add whatever other things I can I want to add and if I click here notice that now it added parts arrive at the system right and this is what's great about it and notice um, this is when you look at some of the models it created in the book right and I click here it actually explains right what this module really represents or does right and does it for every mod module so I encourage you to also do a similar thing, right? Click here again, right? Uh, right click, properties, and then add description, right? And so, what does pro this process one do, right? Um, parts are being drilled, right? And then when I click, right, it tells me parts are being drilled, so I know what this process really represents. All right. So if for some reason uh, these data tips are not being displayed, to display them you can go to view data tips and then you know um, click whatever you want to. If you don't want the default descriptions to be shown, now it, it hides that part. It only shows the user. Alternatively, right, if I want the, uh, sh to show the default but don't want to show the uh, what I define, I can hide the de define, right? So now you can see here on data tips, it only shows the default description and doesn't show user specified. Then if I click on that, it just only shows that, right? If I want to select both, which you might want to include both, then it shows both the one that is already defined by Arena and something that I specified there at the end that says parts arrive at the system, right? If I want it again to change, I can always go to the properties and change this parts arrived as a system. So similar things could be done, right, when we want to, to change the internal model documentation. And so I could go to the um, project description and change the project description there. So I go to run, set up, and then I do the um, project parameters. And in the project parameters, I can say uh, what this project is all about, right? Parts arrived um, at the system. They are drilled. And then they are um, um, polished. All right, the last parts are um, parts leave the system. So you can see, right, I can add this, right, I can change my analyst name, right, um, to say Dr. Ala Camera Designer. I can change my project title from the unnamed project to um, drilling and polishing polishing project, right? And then I do OK. And this is adding the information for my project. Um, so adding the project description. Another important thing that we can do is we can do the find the model documentation report and we go to tools and then we go to model um, documentation report and so it's right it, it you see right all of those different options that you can select right so currently active model has not been saved so let's save the model let's save it as uh, Save as so I'm going to create a new folder called this. And then model one demo and save it in my mo in my folder. 
Well, apparently it doesn't want me to save this in that model. So I decided to save it in a different folder. So I'm gonna save save my model one or actually model zero zero demo in this folder. And so you can see now, right? I can actually do the project description. Uh, sorry, the um, tools um, model documentation report, and it actually generates a report for me as a um, HTML. So you can see this is my HTML report, and you can see that this is the information in the report that I have and it tells me about the model right and it notice there is a model description that I included right it's already in the report right it tells me about different things about it right there's uh, the process information and the create information so that's the information that I selected to be included uh, when I ran the report